Now, to begin the conversation, when you hear the word diabetes, what do you think of? Mm. <laughs> it's been the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with in life. I've been through breast cancer, surgeries, all kinds of problems, but this has been the hardest thing for me to deal with. And what was what's different about it? Well, I have trouble controlling mine. I'm on two different kinds of medicines plus insulin, and I went on insulin from day one. They couldn't get my down. I spent three days in the hospital. Mm -hmm. It went over 500, and my average for the three months before was 473. Mm -hmm. So we've just had a really hard time getting mine under control. How long have you had the disease? It was three years in June. Okay. So are you doing better now? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you don't get anything else wrong and have to go to a doctor, and I got the vertigo and fluid in both ears two weeks ago and had to take a round of that old prednisone. And it messed it up, but I've just about got it back. Okay, so any time you get sick, it makes things uh -huh. more complicated yeah. for you. Yeah. Do you have any other health concerns right now that might be related to the diabetes? or? Well, I just don't know. Uh, my sister was uh, dealing with ovarian cancer, and she died was three years ago in April. And I'd spent four weeks in Charleston, West Virginia with her, and I think that's when it all happened. Mm -hmm. I guess I wasn't eating right. And, and all this other stuff. And I have dealt with another autoimmune disease, uh, vasculitis, and I'd had to be put on that old methotrexate for four and a half years for that. And then I just get it in remission, think I'm doing okay, and then I develop, I find out I'm a diabetic. Mm. And, and see, I had problems with high cholesterol and triglyceride on two kinds of medicine for that. And I had been on a diet, I'd been on a fat-free diet, sugar-free diet for, I, for years had watched what I had eaten mm -hmm. and I couldn't if it, it's been hard for me to understand how but never ever had elevated sugar before it was always normal and when I went to Dr. Samuel in uh, uh, Ashland for the vasculitis he was treating for, I was going every six weeks for blood work and it never did even show it was elevated mm. and I always my knowledge of diabetes was always that you have a problem with it being a little bit elevated and you watch your diet. And then when the diet doesn't work, you go on medicine. Mm -hmm. This is how it's been with my relative. Uh -huh. And then when the medicine doesn't work, you go on insulin. But I had never been around anyone that had to go on medicine, two kinds of medicine, and insulin at the same time. And you're thin. Were yeah. you heavier when you were diagnosed? Yeah, I've always been like this. I don't. I weigh a little bit more than I used to weigh when I was younger, but I've never been big. Mm -hmm. That's what's so mm -hmm. hard to understand. So, do you have diabetes in your family? The closest relative I've ever had with diabetes has been an uncle and an aunt. Mm -hmm. Neither my mom, dad, neither brother or sister. So it's kind of interesting, isn't it, that diabetes, you know, we kind of yeah. say these are the, these are the things mm -hmm. to look for, but mm -hmm. sometimes it pops up when we don't expect it. It did with me. Really thanks. What happened in your family when you found out you were diagnosed? You came home and told them you had diabetes. What? Well, you know, they called me at home. I went in for blood work and she called me at home two hours later and said, I found your problem. You're a diabetic. So she had me come straight in and get prescriptions for metformin and glipizide. Mm -hmm. And I went on it, and I stayed on it for over a week, and it didn't come down one bit. Mm -hmm. And that's when they hospitalized me for three days and nights and put me in the hospital, and they would check it in the morning before I would eat anything, and it would still be 473 or 475. That was with four or five insulin shots a day. Mm -hmm. so, they were just kind of bumfuzzled. Well, Dr. Frederick just, he says, I've just never dealt with, with a diabetic. That it happened like it happened to you. You've been mm -hmm. different from anyone I've ever had. So, so you're a star patient. You'll be remem <laughs> remembered. <aren't you? laughs> I should be, shouldn't I? Yeah. So do you live alone or do you have... No, my husband, in two weeks after I was diagnosed with diabetes, my husband was diagnosed with it. Oh, really? 
He isn't on insulin. Mine was worse than his. But he is on the metformin and glipizide, the same thing I'm on. All right, so what changed at your house? Eating habits, cooking. Mm -hmm. But it made it easier. For about two weeks, I was trying to cook for him and then fix what I could eat. And then after he was diagnosed, then I realized now I can fix one meal and we both can eat it. So that the diet has been the big thing with him. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't a big eater anyway, and I never was a big eater of sweets, so it wasn't too hard for me. My weakness is bread and potatoes. Mm -hmm. I know that's two things that I should not eat a lot of, but I have a hard time. Uh, I started training myself to, to just eat without bread. Mm -hmm. Or if I did, one little piece instead of two big hunks. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that kept mine. The, uh, the carbs is, is the mm -hmm. big thing. And I had to learn that. I couldn't believe it when I found out that I could eat sweet today. My, it'll run my sugar up. It'll be back down to normal in an hour. Mm -hmm. But those carbs, <laughs> once you can sing those carbs, you'll know when you get it back down. Mm -hmm. It takes a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always thought, I guess from the beginning, I thought to myself, you know how you try to read some stuff. If I'm on two kinds of medicines and I'm already on 15 units of Lantus every day, I ought to be able to eat anything I want to. But I found out this not true. Doesn't work. <laughs> now, do you have an activity plan? Do you have yes, this? I go to Curves three days a week. And our church over at Index has just started an exercise class twice a week. And it's vigorous exercise. I went last night. And, uh, that exercise. So now I get to go to Curves three days a week and this one two days a week so that gives me exercises on five days where I've just gone three days. Mm -hmm. And the last blood work I have done, my cholesterol, triglyceride, and my sugar, all three was normal. So it, exercise had to have something to do with yeah, it. So I know it did help. Yeah. It does help. Sometimes uh, uh, you know, everybody's a little bit different. So. Mm -hmm. Some people just the diet itself won't make the difference. You just have to add that exercise to it. Right? Oh yes, yeah. that's now, it. Now diabetes, uh, type two diabetes, is a growing problem. You know, partly because of uh, people being overweight and obese and not being as active as they should. Do you see problems in Morgan County? Do you see that? Well, they don't have. It seems to me they don't have a, a lot of. A, programs to deal with it, but it's doing better because uh, Pat uh, Lewis at the hospital and uh, Lane Bartley out here, they have something going now and I feel like we're getting there. Mm -hmm. But when I first got it, well, there was a support group at the health department and I went and attended that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess if you're not a diabetic, you're not aware of all these things, but once you become one, you're aware of everything that's done for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I feel like we're, we're on our way mm -hmm. with starting exercises in the churches and doctors recommending that they go to curves and uh, all these good uh, diabetic living magazines and all of these uh, recipes or whatever. Uh, I'm a lot more knowledgeable about it than I was three years ago, I'll say. Well, that's good, you know, and uh, uh, are you involved in any uh, groups in the community or? No, I'm not. About church, you have a church family that you Oh, have? yes, uh-huh. Uh, so are you the only one with diabetes, you and a husband? No, or? I'm not the only one in my church that's a diabetic. I have a real good friend that's just found out the last two months that she's a diabetic. So there's several in our churches. And, and do you uh, talk about it at church? Is that well, yes, we do. <laughs> we talk about it at the ladies' uh, ministry, and then we talk about it with a, a ladies' group that meets once a month, mm -hmm. and, and we always discuss it. And, and they're eager. The rest of them are always interested in me telling them about it because none of them are, are diabetics in, my, in that particular group. And they're always wanting to listen or are very concerned mm -hmm. about me have, being a diabetic and mm -hmm. all that I have to do for it. So I share it with them a lot. So they're interested in the information yes. you can bring to them. Mm -hmm. That's good. They are.
Does your church do anything special to give support to the group of you that have diabetes? No, we don't. No, we have a senior citizens group, and that pretty much gets all of them. And we meet once a month mm -hmm. and uh, do devotions and, and take, have potluck mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. But as far as just a group for the ones that are our diabetics, mm -hmm. we don't have. So let's talk a minute about those potlucks. You bring you special to, foods? You just have to watch what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> But but the other uh, other folks don't think about bringing foods that are no. Healthier. But you know they're getting really really good about saying now surely you could eat that and that won't hurt you. So I've talked about my diet so much that they kind of try to help me with it. You okay. just have to pick over what you can and can't eat. You have to be a squeaky wheel. You better believe it. Uh, and a table full of desserts hurts. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to fib about it. Sometimes I break over. Sometimes when I, we have a church dinner or whatever, I'll say, um, I'm going to eat what I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? <laughs> well, when I get home, my sugar's high. <laughs> 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 but it's usually time for my insulin by the time I get home. <laughs> right, right, right. So you try not to do the same thing tomorrow. Yeah. The next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think there's things that we can do in the community to... Um, reduce the risks of diabetes for these younger people? I would recommend uh, exercise. I know uh, Randy Williams, the county court clerk, teaches a Tybo class. I mm -hmm. went to it for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, the exercises we're doing at the church are the mm -hmm. same ones we did in that class. Mm -hmm. But I would recommend that. And I don't. I think it would be good to just have a a special, uh, just a group in Morgan County that's either uh, a diabetic or dealing with a di uh, someone in the family that's a diabetic. I think it would help to, uh, to meet as a group, discuss it, share recipes and, mm -hmm. and things like that. I think that would, mm -hmm. would work. I Some kind would. of a support group. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's nothing like that right now. See, they think of all these other diseases and they try to have a support group for them. But the people that are not diabetics and don't have anyone, they've not dealt with anyone in their family with it, don't realize it's a very serious disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think we should be educating people on it. Mm -hmm. Because it, I knew nothing about it because I never, I knew I would never be one because I was always skinny as a rail and didn't eat sweets, so wouldn't you think I wouldn't be one? Uh-huh. So I can be surprised, can't I? You can be surprised. <laughs> you better not, you better not write anything off, anything that happened to you. Yeah. Now, were you born and raised here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know folks, probably, probably related to a number of folks around them mm -hmm. in some way or another. Oh, yeah. What's the best way to get messages out to people in the community? Um, I guess you would have to maybe advertise it, maybe uh, articles in the paper. Or, uh, maybe it needs to be, maybe there needs to be a group in the church that deals with diabetes. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could uh, involve the people that are not just to educate them on it. Yeah. But one of the things that uh, we were concerned about is that the diabetes often runs in families. I know it. You know, and neither my mom nor my dad. So for you that wasn't true, but for the majority mm -hmm. of people it is mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we're wanting people that have the disease or they're at risk to sort of pay more attention to their own health and mm -hmm. that of others. Yeah, and do you know that that uh, it's not uncommon uh, with young children anymore? That's the thing that concerns me. And just like my son, I have the one son, and his dad was a diabetic, and now I've turned out to be one, and I, his chances are much greater than someone that neither mm -hmm. parent is. Of course, I thought I was safe, too. And in my mom's family, there was, I don't know of anyone, but now in my dad's family, he had a sister and a brother. So do you talk to your son? 
Yes, I do. And then I, it, he, they keep a check on it. And uh, they say he's on the borderline. He's only 42. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And he's lived it with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he pretty well knows what it's all about. And he's very careful and cautious because he doesn't. He's so afraid he will develop into one. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he doesn't want to. So he tries to do things to prevent it. So I hope he never has to deal with it. I think that's what most moms or dads think oh, if they have that. They'd rather do it themselves, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think there's anything um, that people particularly need to know about the disease of diabetes? I'll tell you what I wish I had known when this whole ordeal started, that, that how it can damage other parts of the body. Because I have this... Uh, major bladder problem and I've just gone to a specialist and uh, he said that what I was dealing with was caused from the diabetes mm -hmm. and so I always wondered how it damaged the kidneys and how you would know what are the symptoms and if you ever have to go on insulin and all that I mean on di uh, dialysis and all that these are my concerns mm -hmm. and uh, so I guess what he is saying is this is how it starts. You know, mm -hmm. It starts here and, mm -hmm. and that that concerns me more than anything. Mm -hmm. There's two things that concern me the most is dialysis and maybe losing a, a foot or a leg or something mm -hmm. like that. That concerns me more than anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people need to know. And they need to start their watch their diet and do daily exercise. They need to know that diabetes will destroy other parts of the body. Do you go um, once a year and have your eyes checked? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and do you look at your feet? Well, I'm I'm having problems with the bottom of my feet burning at night and I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. But they've just put me on uh, Neurotin for it. I take 200 milligrams every night mm -hmm. and I'm doing better. I'm sleeping more. Good. It is helping. Good. Good. Well, I think that's all the questions I have. Is there uh, anything else that uh, I didn't ask you about that you think is important to share? Well, I can't think. I would advise everybody to make sure they have theirs checked often. <laughs> because if mine had been checked three months before, because maybe they would have caught mine at an earlier stage. I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And they really don't know what caused mine. Dr. Frederick says he really doesn't know what. Mm -hmm. He says the only thing that he can come up with is that one day my pancreas was working and the next day it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't do anything about it anyway, can Old you? age, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that, no doubt. <laughs> oh, we got an old pancreas. Oh, yes, that's it. <laughs> That's it, but I reckon that's not uncommon yeah. about that.